All right. Welcome to another episode of the SUP FM podcast. I am one of your hosts, Lawrence Deloach, LZD325. Uh, with me, I got my boys, as always, Chris Cheney. What's up, guys? And my guy, Luke Trevisi. What's up, everybody? It's my new radio voice. What do you think? Wow. Welcome to SUP FM. SUP FM. <laughs> Home of the classics. Uh, <laughs> Streetwear's ultimate podcast. Beow, meow, meow, meow. Well, thank you for, for tuning in, guys. Uh, as always, you can find us at uh, SUP Podcast. Wait, uh, yeah. SUP Podcast, Sup Podcast NYC. And <laughs> you I had got, it. I, had, I got a little, a little freaked out there. Yep. Uh, <laughs> yep. Luke, where can we find you, as usual? At Trevizus, T-R-O-V-E-E-Z-U-S. Chini. Not that Cheney, C-H-E-N-E-Y. Okay, we had a little low, and uh, <laughs> see, this is when it's supposed to come back to me. But you know what, guys? Listen, uh, Lawrence. Yeah, sure. Uh, this, this <laughs> yeah, you're having a mental breakdown over there. The, the listeners are gonna hate this this part up top. I think we're gonna have to we're gonna have to do some type of editing here because this was really bad up top, and uh, I was hoping you guys would have worked with me a little bit better. But we have what? a lot of <laughs> what? What are you, you bringing about? it in? What are you talking about? What are you talking? About? That's your job to bring it in. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so you were this, bringing it. You said I'll bring it in. What? Yeah. What? Oh, yeah, you're right. All right, so I tried to place blame on other guys. Uh, Meanie, <laughs> don't edit any of this. Don't, don't edit, edit any none of this, of this shit. Don't, this is staying away, in. Meanie. We're still this, recording. This is horrible right now, but uh, we have a lot to discuss this week. Uh, let's kind of uh, get right into it, guys. Uh, it is cold as hell in New York City. It is uh, <laughs> the middle of February, and uh, we are going to get right into the Fly East, uh, the Nike Fly East. What's going? Talk to me, guys. You like them? What's up? So, I mean, like this, this was announced a couple of weeks ago, but like, you know, throughout whatever we haven't gotten to it. Um, I, to me, the design nerd here, I'm like all over it. Um, this is one of those things where they initially do a very simple, very uh, concise uh, shoe based around solely the technology. Right. Where, uh, you know, every new technology has gotten one of these. It's the standard. It's like similar to like, you know, uh, any. Uh, like Roshi, that was sort of like the first movement of it, where I was like, this is the simple shoe, and then we're going to innovate it later. Um, I'm just excited because it's the first thing that they've done in a while where I'm actually excited about it. You know, they had that shit where they were like having... Yeah, exactly. Perfect. Luke just put it up on the screen here. They had that shit where they stole from Puma, where it looked like they had a ball pit in the shoe. You know what I mean? That didn't really go anywhere. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? So they've had a couple misses in the past couple years, but these are these are ones that actually a lot of people are excited about. Yeah, man, I'm super excited about the representation of robot arms for one thing in this uh, in this little um, little pick right here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she it does have a robot arm. She, I did the, not the notice person, that. The person who's like modeling the shoe is like who's putting it on. She has a robot arm. It's sick. I want one. They they probably should have just had her take the robot arm off to to reinforce the point that you don't need arms to no, put the shoe on. No, no, no. It gives her more power. It's a good choice. Good branding choice. So what? I, what I'm? All right. What do you got, Al? No, I'm. I'm just. You know, I see them, and I'm like, you know, <laughs> I feel like this is just another like Nike, like uh, another tactic. You know, another thing they're trying to push. And then by next year, we're like, oh, this was cool for 2021, and now it's, it's fucking, it's whack. I don't. I don't really see the big like hype about these. I'm. I'm really like, I, at least I just guys. Really, okay. I can't really. You guys can sell me on these shits, but I just feel like this is like another Nike product, like the Roshis or like, you know, the 270s or some shit that Nike's like, you guys need to have these. And then six months down the line, no one gives a fuck about these sneakers because I don't really care right now about them. So uh, to retort uh, the two examples that you use, one I brought up initially, you said the Roshi, right? And the other one, you said like the 270. Um, I don't even remember the other ball pit, actual name of the technology there. React. React like the React balls, yeah, yeah, yeah. React as a general technology, they've sort of like had that sprinkled on, around a bunch of stuff. What's cool about this L is that it's actually an innovation that's useful. Those yeah. other pitches are more marketing and like like the two seventy is supposed to be a running shoe, but they say don't run in it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That is just an aesthetic uh, for the athleisure people to have like a new shoe. You know what I mean? This is actually a functional thing that can be used towards other shoes in the future and change how they're worn. Yeah. So that's why it's exciting to me. 
right now, these like a perfect house slipper, I think. Mm -hmm. Like, I wouldn't really wear these out or anything. I wouldn't run in them or whatever. I would just sort of keep them like contained. But imagine a three with that. Right. No, no, no. We're not taking we're not going to put these on a Jordan. Please. Well, let's no, not, no, no. Let's not you're, you're ruin. Thinking, you're thinking of it like, no, this is for people who have who can't use their hands. Right. So why? Well, that's one to thing, too. But I'm saying Jordan, eventually like, they, they take all the technologies and they yeah. eventually spread them out to every model. OK. All right. Here, here's where this is where I am going to agree with you on these sneakers. Uh, I like. OK, for example, my stepdad, he has he has a bad hip, so he has he has a tough time. Yep. And down right. to tie his sneakers. Right. So whenever I, you know, I give him my sneakers and he's always like, you know, and he always sometimes has a tough time where he has to have my mom help him out. So I'm guessing a shoe like this would be perfect for someone like, you know, who has a tough time bending down so you can just sure. step on the back. But I, as a as just a general person, like a dude, I mean, unless they're which I'm sure they're super comfortable. I just don't they don't touch my soul. Like, I'm like, all right, cool. Maybe I'll try to get them for my stepdad, but I'm not getting them for myself. Right. There's, these are not supposed to be marketed as like a, like the hype. I don't think this is going to change streetwear. Exactly. These shoes. It's more going to be like it, the functionality is really what the selling point of the shoe is. Okay. But I will say that there will be a shoe at some point where it's going to be hype. It's going to be some sort of dunk or something. And it's going to have that fly East technology. And we're all going to be like, why can't we get these shoes? So here, here's the other thing, too, is that so they, the way they seated them, at least in my algorithms, is that, like, you know, Fujiwara got a pair. He got that black pair with the blue lining. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's sort of like a targeted thing. So he's probably going to work on that. So a fragment collab. I'm just speculating. Fragment collab seems like that's going to be a play. Right. All the people that make the noise that we care about have the shoe and are thinking about it now. Mm hmm. Well, that's that's just that's just Martin Nike's marketing tactic yes. where they give them to they see them to the people right. who you know who have right. the following. So I don't know. If, I don't know if like but you said. Here, if, but okay. what I'm saying is, I I'm they didn't give them to like you didn't see a, a picture with Drake. At least I did it. The what the people that they gave them to are the people that do like the hype collapse. And Jimmy Fallon. So, and Jimmy Fallon. Yeah, wait, can you talk about that Jimmy Fallon shit? Because you mentioned it um off mic, and I didn't even know about this. Yes, Jimmy Fallon sent in a video. Uh, of a product to Nike that basically copied this entire like back in like 2007 like he sent over these designs of uh of a shoe back in 2019 where you'd step on the back of the shoe and then it would come up and exactly exactly what the fly east does and then they basically told him that they were actually been working on this technology for 20 years and then they sent him this back like a year later or two years later yeah, I didn't even know about this shit. That's crazy. Yeah. And then they send it to him and it's got like they did like a whole box for him when they used the art from the from the sketch they he sent. It was pretty cool, honestly. Wait, and let's go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. But it's like, yeah, it's not like it's not going to be for like the hype beast crowd. It's for the the people who watch Jimmy Fallon on No, on it will PBR. be. I don't know if these are gonna like i don't i'm not even looking at them from a hype beast crowd like i'm just looking at them from a okay here we go this is what nike's gonna force down our throats this year so they're gonna make them super limited they're gonna make people be like oh my god i need these and then they're gonna flood the market and then that's the i think i feel like that's how it's gonna play out with these wait okay but here's the other thing too with a tech a new technology with nike mm -hmm. in particular um they're they haven't they haven't like catered to a sneakerhead. Now, just follow me on this. They haven't catered to a sneakerhead sort of uh, functionality with the shoes. When Lawrence, you don't tie your laces. We mm -hmm. tie them once and then we slip the shoe on every time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's no need for us to actually have that part. Like I, I imagine that later down the line, they're going to have versions of these with with laces that you actually just don't need to like, like treat them like how you would you lace them like, once with, and then they become slip-ons they would slip have, verge wire. They would have yes. verge wire yeah the verge wire sure something like that so there are they're kind of like setting us up for shit that we already do we don't tie our shoes and we slip our shoes on okay. if they take this and apply it to shit that we want to wear i can i don't see how this couldn't be a banger 
Okay. I'm with you. I listen, I'm 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 hearing you out, Chris. You're the designer. You're the guy who understands the the intricacies of how fire it is as a design. Me, like I said, maybe when I see them and I try them on, like, you know, I'd be like, oh, these are cool. But at the same time, I feel like this is something like that I'm just not gonna fuck with in general because I already I have too you. many sneakers that are like comfortable. And I can thank God I have the functionality to be able to tie my own sneakers, bend down. Maybe when I'm, you know, 65 and you know I need a hip surgery or whatever, but I'm fucking good <laughs> right now. So um, I got you. So listen, let's. I want to kind of you know move on because we got a lot of shit we got to get into right, this right, week, right. guys. Um, yo, my man Kanye West, man. I I I am. Listen, the dude's had an interesting few years. I mean, he told the world that his daughter, you know, they were gonna abort, you know, his daughter. Uh, he had many public embarrassments. He ran for president, uh, failed, uh, and now he's getting a divorce from Kim Kardashian, man. We getting new Yeezy Fire sneakers, new uh, Fire music. What's up? Yeah, we're getting uh, we're getting we're gonna get an album we actually want this time. I think. I think I think it's uh, we're, we're in the age of, of Yeezy again. It's it's all coming back. It's time. Yeah. It's 2016 again. Y'all really listen. I'm gonna be honest with you, and I'm I'm a, I was a huge musical Kanye fan, man. And I'm gonna be honest. I don't think we're getting even the life of Pablo was like ah, it was cool, but it wasn't like it was like mosh pit music, and I wasn't. But I think the last like really decent album he had, and some people are gonna flame me for this, but it was fucking Jesus, man. That was like the and that was ahead of his time. But I just feel like this dude's on his gospel wave. He's just rapping about shit that doesn't make sense. You know what I mean? Wait, like, so I, you really trying to say you don't fuck with Pablo? I said it's all right. I, I'm not saying I don't think it was. I said it was good mosh pit music, but I don't think it was like, uh, like it's not like, like I feel like obviously his best run of music ended with to a certain extent my beautiful dark twisted fantasy and that was I mean, a decade yeah, ago that's, that, that's like the... when we look at kanye west musically we say all right great he had you know grad he had uh what was it college dropout he had you know late registration graduation my beautiful dark and then 808s he had 808s in between that which to me was a beautiful album but up until my beautiful dark twisted fantasy then he started kind of going very uh abstract to me musically Right. Yeah. No, you're not yeah. incorrect. I'm with you. That's a, that's literally a, he had the Watch the Throne album with him and Jay, which I think was also very good. I mean, that was to me him that and then the um, the good music album called Winter uh, or what, Cruel, Cruel, Summer. Cruel Summer. Yeah. Cruel Summer, yep. Which I think that was him rapping at his best ability. But dude is like, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, I, I don't think I don't think we getting more fire music from Kanye. I think that that era is over, man. Um, I think we're gonna get one more out of him that we want. We almost know, had guys. it with Yandi. Like Watch. we were, we almost had it with Yandi. We were really close. Watch this in the blood is pretty good. Listen, yeah, and that's a, and that was it. But you know what? That was I'm not even gonna sit here and lie. That was Trav assisted, man. Trav, Trav helped him out a lot with that. I mean, he has some. I mean, other than that, I mean, he's got a lot of like bullshit songs this like well, in the last couple of years hold on because everybody's helped yay the whole time he does he's not like a writer he ha, he pay you know he has producers under him you know what i mean like so mm -hmm. he always has sort of had the baton pass back and forth between him and like whoever's hot and whoever's got under him so don't say Big that he helped with yeah. uh what did he help with he had they had that uh that dual album the uh kids see ghosts but he's no, Kid they Cuddy's done so much more. That, yeah, Kid Cudi's been on every like so many projects of Kanye's. Man. I think he was on. Oh, that's true. Yes. Yeah, yeah. He's on Jesus. Yeah. I mean, I think he was on. You know, he was on. Um, uh, my beautiful dark twisted fantasy. Did all right. the lights. Yes. So you know, Kid Cudi's always there. I mean, he's always had like help, whether it was Consequence early in his you know Rhyme Fest, all them dudes. You know, back in the days with the the college dropout years. But what I'm saying is I think where we're at now with Kanye, I just unless he just gets all of the new era of music and he brings in all these guys, you know, all the young guys like the thugs, the fucking Travs, the, you know, the Cordays, all of these dudes who are fucking popping musically like Kanye is too far gone to me. I mean, let's focus on the sneakers. I think that's the shit that, you know, the the fashion. I think that's what we really need. Wait, to you want to talk? You want to focus on those 450s that look like dumplings on your feet? Hey, careful. <laughs> Tell me they don't look like dumplings. Uh, they look like dumplings? Dumplings. Dump, dumplings. Yeah. Dump, dumplings. 
dumping. I'm, I'm Chris. Oh, I am dumping. so tempted. I'm not going to. All right, move on, please. Don't. <laughs> no, don't. don't. <laughs> uh, yes, these are the 450s. Uh, yeah, they look like dumplings. This I is would, what you want to focus on, Al? This is what you want him to work on. I mean, yeah, <sighs> it, 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 it might need work, yeah. You know what? And I'm going to say this. I'd rather wear those shits than the fly ease. Get so. out of here. Wow. You are out of your mind. Wow. I actually, you know, I don't know. Nike I would actually. Bad. Nike didn't. You know what? Nike didn't hurt me bad, but I am. I, I wouldn't buy these, but mm-hmm. I would fucking. I would rock these, though. These are so stupid that I would rock these. How much? So you're, you, you would fucking wear these and not the fly ease. Uh, I don't. I, yeah. To be honest, with you. these are wow. so these are so like stupid looking and different. <laughs> they are pretty, I'm, they're different. That's true. March fourth. Do we have a, do we have a estimated retail on those or no? Estimated retail. I think it's. I think I read somewhere that it was actually under three, but I, I don't don't yeah, quote I, me. I, I don't know either. It's either I think it's going to be two fifty. Don't quote me on that. No prices right. yet. Don't quote anything that we say. <laughs> Yeah, that'd be weird. I'll try to find out before the, the, the uh, podcast episode is over. So let's uh, let's kind of move forward because I want to give a shout out to uh, uh, a lot of hype beast, black people's pops. Uh, Michael Jordan, happy birthday. Bladed Michael Jordan birthday, 58. Uh, his airness has inspired many uh, entertainers, uh, fashion trends, dudes. They're still trying to get, you know, his original sneakers, the OG Jordan ones from 35 you know 36 years ago um when you think of michael jordan what do you guys think what, what's the first thing that comes to your mind of, of michael jordan i guess the ones just yeah just his shoes i guess or you know i do have a thing where like because i did a book report on him when i was younger and uh the the first book i read about mike it talked about how he stuck his tongue out when he was dunking so i think of that pause okay I do, I do think of the I do think of the dunk. I, I think of his dunk. The he did the when he did the cradle dunk. I think of that. Oh yep, <clears throat> tongue okay. out. <laughs> I remember. I like. I, I have a lot of uh, Michael Jordan moments. You know, obviously, I'm I'm a little bit older than you guys. You know, and and it, it gets brought up a lot on this podcast. I mean, sh- shut the fuck up. But I <laughs> I remember just being. Uh, I was like eight. I was like eight, you know, ish. And I remember, you know, the Olympics and I remember the finals against Clyde Drexler and the Blazers. And I remember he hits these six three pointers in the first half. And he and he just everyone's like, yo, this guy is shooting threes. And he looks at the camera, he just shrugs his shoulders like ah, whatever. I'm, I remember I'm that. Shrug. Just the and and I just remember, you know, being a kid in Brooklyn and wearing his sneakers, which, you know, you know, obviously it was it was dangerous to wear growing up you know you wearing air jordans and the hood it's you know you, it's a target on your back but i i just remember just got like all the memories and you know and now as an adult i just re- see like all the sneakers that i've purchased and and had and had memories in and it's like you know it's it's interesting man it's it's a beautiful thing but it's also an expensive thing and it's also you know it's kind of damaging to the culture but it's also great for the culture There's so many different feels that you have for michael jordan so yeah i i don't think he's gonna get i mean he he already is like revered as like one of the people who'd like to change the way that we sort of not only look at basketball but sneakers or whatever uh, he's done so much globally to the world. I don't think people are going to really give him his flowers at the end of the day, as crazy as that is to say, because we already give him so much flowers. Mm-hmm. But like he literally changed the world. Mm-hmm. Do, do we have a favorite uh, Air Jordan model? Chris? Three, probably. Luke? I used to say I I wanted I used to say nines because those are my first pair. It's not a good. It's not the best pair. No, the they're the bad ones. ones. Bad pair. They're not, a, they're not that bad. They're it's in not the that middle. They're bad. You know, they just they're not great. I I mean, if you if you make a list of the first like thirteen, then the nine is low. He didn't wear them either in yeah. a game. He only wore yeah. them in Space Jam. Um, for me, it's got, it's got to be either the ones or the twos, man. The twos are are so underrated as a Jordan that it doesn't get the love it deserves. It doesn't get the releases it deserves. But you know, a pair of white, black, and red twos, man, just. <sighs> No, I'm with you on that. I'm with you on that. 
so we actually we actually had some uh we had a Jordan release on uh on Friday uh the silver toe Jordan ones mm-hmm. they, they released in women's uh sizes uh Nike pulled a a major pump fake where they said that they would have uh extended sizes and at 10 a.m. when the sneakers app uh, opened for sale, they did not have the extended sizes. Just another day in the life of the sneakers app. Yeah, there was like that was one big L, but I think there was like four major L's. There was the cool gray threes. Yes. Uh, oh, and then there was like, no, it was, there was three other dunks, right? The lows. Yeah. Yeah. L's all around here. Yep. Now, were the cool grade threes, you know, because I honestly I wasn't really paying attention to them. I, I, I wasn't like hyped about them or anything. Were they were they a hard get for people or? Yeah, I don't yeah. think so. Really? No, they were. Yeah, they were hard. get. I got I mean, you know, I'm sure as we have friends who also like sneakers, like us three talk about this shit weekly. But I do get texts from like other comics and friends from home about like different shoes or whatever. And I actually got it like four or five people going like, damn, I missed out on those threes, which I was surprised at because I don't even think that's one of the better three colors. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, but I mean, this is also just like, I try to explain to these guys. I'm like, yo, like, especially the guys at home who try to shoot for this shit. I'm like, you you ain't got none of this shit. Show me what you got in your uh, purchase area of your sneakers app. And it's always empty. I'm like, you got, this isn't like, just sit this out for a while. (laughs) Buy Solomon's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Buy something else. Buy Solomon's. Yeah, like this isn't for you. We do have a, a we did see a sneak uh, peek or we saw a preview of a, a, a collaboration on a Jordan three by uh, Manir. How you pronounce yeah. that? Yes. I don't know how to actually pronounce that, but I love that you tried. <laughs> yeah. I'm a Manir. I'm, an, I'm, a, I'm a Manir. Um, those. OK, so here's the thing on those, because I actually love they use the suede on those panels that usually have the elephant print. Mm-hmm. And I am going to go against because I usually stand by. I like my shoes to look new when I buy them because uh-huh. they have like those that, that crazy cream in fucking old looking vintage shit. I actually like those a lot. The suede on like the elephant print panels like kind of put me in for it. Uh, what, who, what shoe are we talking about? <laughs> There's a it's a pair of threes uh-huh. uh, that no none of us will be able to pronounce the name of it. How do I spell it? <laughs> you can't even, it's like three words. It's like a. Lawrence, you got it in front of you? Yeah, A and then space M A. <laughs> uh-huh. And then Manier, M A N I E R E. And then it's the Air Jordan 3. This is the ultimate sneaker podcast. Ultimate sneaker. I don't I don't see it. What's it look like? <laughs> the ultimate sneaker podcast. Ultimate where we can't sneaker. even say any name of the brand. Now this we one. we've we've seen them do a yes, we've seen them do a collab with we we seen them do an Air Force One, yep. which is beautiful. Uh, there's a rumor that these are a women's uh, release. Mm-hmm. Yep. So we are hoping for extended sizes. But, uh, you know, as things as you know, we've seen with other collabs with Jordan brand when it has women's sizes, the bigger size, obviously, uh, they're going to be, you know, extremely limited, very hard to get. And as we've seen with other Jordan collabs, uh, a lot of the sneakers are going through the back door. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, so I'm, I'm not expecting these to be a walk in the park for people. You know what I am expecting, though? Because Luke, on the side here, our back L, has actually been trying to figure out how to use bots. Okay. All I right. found him on Clubhouse one night. Randomly, did, usually when Luke goes on Clubhouse, he'll ping me or, like, he'll join my room or we'll try, you know, we'll, he'll text me going, like, let's get in a room. No, I went on Clubhouse to find him in a room strictly talking about bots and how to use them. Yes. So, here you are again on Subcourt. Uh-huh. You have to defend yourself, Mr. Trevisus. Okay. All right. Well, first of all, you know, how you doing, Judgey? We've been here before. You know who I am. Um, second of <laughs> all, let's get let's talk about this. All right. I was in a clubhouse room. Uh, there were some there were some bot users and discord people that were talking about how to get into reselling this shit. And basically, the the people who were trying to teach the class were you know, just found like a bunch of information on YouTube. It's, it's big cap. It's big cap on Clubhouse. I'll tell you that much. Uh, I have learned a couple of things, though. Uh, it does take a little bit of money to start up bots. We know that. But sneakers and, and Shopify websites are actually the most uh, difficult to purchase on because even for resellers. Now, why is that? The reason why is because their security is so easy to bypass that since everyone can bypass it, 
everyone can get in. Right. So every single person who has a bot and is running a hundred plus accounts on that bot is also trying to get in there. So if there's 10,000 people using bots and they all have a hundred accounts on them, at least you have a hundred thousand right there. Right. Or maybe a million right there. I don't know. <laughs> what um, my point is that it, it's way harder. Like there's, uh, there's some decent protection on Shopify's and, and sneakers and their their like uh, protection is other people who use them. It's kind of fucking weird. So what are you going to get a bot? What do you like? I didn't. So I, Lawrence, I didn't even like join to speak. I just sat in the back. I mean, you were in there for a while, Luke. I was yeah. just kicking. Are you really going to get a bot? No, I'm not getting bots. I can't. It's I, I figured it's it's actually like a waste of money at this point. Sneakers, as far as a resale game, like people are starting to realize that it's it's going on decline. Uh, so it's like it's not really worth even trying to get a bot for. It's just too much work for that. And also, like people are doing bricks now where they like they buy bulk stock of like Nike GRs and then they uh, and then they flip them for retail by getting like a discount. It's like, I don't know. Eventually, the, these people are going to be tired of like, you can already hear they're kind of tired of it because they're getting, they don't understand why people are mad at them. <laughs> and it's psycho. Hmm. I'm, I'm going to say that as long as, okay, here's the thing, as long as you can make $20, and I, I hate to say it, but people are that desperate for, for money that if they feel like they can make $20 a pair, then they're still going to run bots. They're still going to do all this underhanded shit. Right, but it's you're not even making $20 because you got to spend all the money to get in. I understand that. But what I'm saying to you is like where you're saying like, all right, you know, people are going to realize that, you know, reselling or it's kind of going under. Reselling is never going to stop at this point because unfortunately the powers that be have made it seem like, oh, reselling is cool to the point where, Niggas is getting their grandmas involved to to resell. You know what I'm saying? Your grandma, fill out this raffle. Or, you know, dudes are running bot games. Now, what the average consumer who's just trying to make a quick dollar doesn't understand in the sneaker game is, yeah, you're going to get stuck with a lot of the shit if you think that, oh, I'm just going to pick up any pair and make some money off of it. Right. So that part, you know, I do feel like it, it's it's almost like people are blindly trying to be resellers. But the whole reseller game is all it's always going to be there. Case in point, And I and this is a perfect example. There was a video this week and we've seen it in the last couple of weeks with COVID mm -hmm. and, you know, guys, you know, really, I guess, resellers being a little starved on the market because a lot of things went online where in Harlem dudes were in front of a Jimmy Jazz uh, ready to fucking kill each other for these women's dunks that released this week. Mm -hmm. Reselling ain't dead. And it ain't never like, you know what I'm saying? Did you guys see this video? Yeah. On, okay. No, wait, I didn't see this video. Oh, you didn't see it? All right. <clears throat> Give me a second. It's going to be a, a Jimmy Jazz in Harlem for the for the Silver Toes? No, not no, for the Silver no, no. Toes. Oh, for, oh, the, oh, for the dunks, for the Coast dunks that were coming out. Now, okay. uh, while, while Luke's pulling up that video, I will definitely agree with you in terms of having a bot is no longer the the like the one up that it used to be because like you said everyone has a bot some people's bots are way better than others you know it's you know if this was maybe seven years ago having a bot you know oh my god you're fucking game on but now there's just so many different bots and so mm -hmm. many people have these mega bots that it ain't worth it so whatever you would have paid luke you probably would have ended up definitely losing money bro <laughs> yeah exactly you're gonna lose money on it and also it's just you know uh, it, it's, I, I don't see it. Yeah. I just don't see it being as like as big a market as it used to be, because like, if you look at the numbers from like the past couple of weeks, even the 85s, the neutral grays are still like hovering around 600, which is not the same percent. I, I think we can all agree it would not be the same percent increase that we would expect if it was like three years ago and they dropped the 85s. No, I, you know what? No, 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 no. If it was, if it was three years ago, they would have been a lot less than six hundred dollars. No, I yeah. think they'd be a lot more. Why would they be less? Because no, no, uh, Lawrence is right. They would have been a lot less because if you realize if we're in if we're in the era of twenty eighteen, the twenty okay. let's say okay, so let's just say 2017, 2018, right? 
we had Royals release, we had uh, Shadows release. Uh, you know, you could have got a no, pair you're of right, Royals. You're right. You could have got a pair of Royals for like two fifty, two sixty. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like you know, Unions came out in uh, 2018 or 2017, 20 no, 2018, and you could have got the Unions for you know six hundred. You know, and that's like you know that's a collapse. So I think you know, obviously neutral grades at 600 it's like oh man but yeah that's that's pretty pretty high for a, a sneaker like that yeah no that's fair the but- inflation didn't happen yet it was it was like when virgil hit with the 10 mm-hmm. and celebrities started to realize that nike's could replace these designer shoes that they were wearing right, right? so that's where the inflation came from it literally just like that 17 was really like the boom okay I- I will definitely agree with Chris on that. 2017, I think, was the year that we uh, we started seeing where like sneakers can go to a level that it, it we just really didn't see on you know on many models. We've yeah, yeah. we've always said like the entry points for sneakers, you know, like six, five six hundred dollars for like a hype collab, but like now sneaker or hype sneakers are starting out four figures. Yeah, because celebrities are buying them because they rep- they replaced the designer wear they were wearing before. Now, if you notice, there's not a lot of Balenciaga anymore. In 2016, Balenciaga was the shit. Adidas okay, was okay. the shit in 2016. Adidas was the shit. Adidas yep. was the shit. Everybody but Balenciaga knows. was the designer shoe to wear, that fucking triple S shit where the sole was like five inches back behind you or whatever the fuck it was. Yes. So, so. those those retailed for like 600 but then Virgil was like, yo, I'm going to wear my ones doing whatever. I got all these designer... Jordans now, and then just uh, people are like, "Oh shit, we'll just wear those." But that's really where it was. Okay, it's um, true. But it's just like the the flooding of the market with everything that's coming out. They we had three dunks come out on Thursday. Mm-hmm. They're just going to start becoming. Uh, I, I'm I'm just thinking they're going to start becoming less valuable, and that, I think that's the point. Just like sneakers in general, is they're trying to put out as many colorways as possible to maybe not purposely but like that's what's a side effect of all of these different colorways is it lowers the value of all of them in general yeah i mean i don't know if we said it on mic or if it was off mic but we did talk about it's kind of stabilizing and like you know every resale is now between two and 350 for a gr yeah um oh, but wait did you hear did you hear that you, two 350 for I a know. general release which is I know. absolutely it's disgusting insane. right so I mean the problem the problem is right and I'll say this you have these you have these general release dunks poor quality you know it retails at a hundred dollars and then everyone's like all right I got a shot at these like you said uh, Chris and then all of a sudden there's a there's some problem there's a glitch on sneakers or they're a lot less limited than you know there's they're super limited and then like you said it's like oh 300 that doesn't sound like a bad price for these you know I'm gonna jump in but it's like that's horrible. Yeah, but we, mm-hmm. we we fucking get like hyped over this shit where people are like, yeah, I'll, you know, I'll figure out a way. I'll I'll move something I got a year ago. I I got some shit a year ago that I held on to just for this moment. Or it, it it's all it, it it's, it's so. I let me let me tell you about this, Luke. I think you came in the room at the end. This is just another clubhouse thing. So I was in a room with some some older heads. Um, I'm trying to think if it's now. Nah, I'm not going to name drop, but they're like streetwear guys. There's like older streetwear dudes. Think of older brands that you maybe assume are dead, but maybe they're not dead. Maybe they're still working, right? I was talking to these dudes and I was trying to explain the trophy room thing. <laughs> yes. Were you there for that, Luke? I was, and they yes, were getting were. mad because they, they were, were getting, uh, dude. <laughs> they don't want to know about it. I'll say one name, and it was Greg Mishka from Mish- the Mishka brand. Okay. Mm-hmm. I was in there. I was trying to explain to him and, the, and this other guy, Arthur, like, like, <laughs> like the state of sneakers. Because Art, I, I think it was, one of the dudes was like, man, I can't buy shit. Like, oh, it was the store. Okay, yeah, I, I shouldn't. I got to be careful. I don't want to. I'm probably Jesus. giving us too much info. Sorry. Uh, I'm trying to pedal around. Basically, uh, Mishka got promised a pair of shoes. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. By yeah. somebody. <laughs> and the guy didn't follow through with it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And now the shoes are big money. Right. But it wasn't it wasn't the point that the shoes are big money now. It's that he got promised something and it, it didn't happen. Mm-hmm. Um, And now those shoes. Uh, are many people's grails. It's it's up there in price, but now he's sort of sitting back on like that. Uh, you know, he told me this story, and then I told him about the trophy room shit. And these old dudes were getting so mad. Yeah, <laughs> they're like, this doesn't even make any sense. What the fuck is the point of even buying these sneakers anymore? This is why we tried to get out of this shit in the first place. Well, Chris, right. you, you shouldn't have said the name. You should have just said the sneaker that he was promised, and then I'd have been like, oh, 
I'll tell you no, off mic, but you can't. You can't tell them the sneaker. Yeah, I can't tell you the sneakers. You would know exactly who it was. Who it I'm not trying to. Yeah, I'm not oh, trying to put all you. that. Got you. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. So he was from. Okay, okay, okay. All right. It was a, like it was a designer shoe. Like his name was tagged on the shoe. Well, all right, Luke, calm down. <laughs> Let's let, let the people guess a little bit, you know. But yeah. all right, yeah, yeah. It's so, Fujiwara. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't. It wasn't. But. but it's, yeah, no, it's just it's it's shit like this where now we're at the point where like we have Stockholm syndrome with this shit and we don't know how to get out of it. Explaining it to anybody with any common sense who has the same love of sneakers is like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah, well, just you, Ewing's. That's what they would say. Well, what's funny, I'll say this. What's funny is I, I'm starting to notice that like so many of my friends, like uh, like high school friends, dudes who were never into sneakers. I think the, and we've discussed this on this podcast, the, the, the app itself. It makes like when you see the gotham, it does something to your brain that you're like, oh fuck, yeah, I won. Like you can have 37 losses in a row. And when you get that one gotham, it does something to us. And I, I'm just like, I like I don't like Nike has it, it's it's fucking dopamine, they, bro. Yeah, bro. It, it's insane, man. It's, like it's it's one of the best hits of dopamine, fine quality dopamine. <laughs> <laughs> to see that gotham, like God, it, come it, on. Well, because not not only is it the like getting a like on a post on Facebook, right? Not that kind of like reward, but it's also a hyper channeled sneaker specific mm -hmm. reward that only us get when we get the got him. You know what I mean? I know that's sort of like fucking like, oh, that's the shit right there. I want to kind of, you know, I want to kind of change gears a little bit because I know we can go on and on about sneakers and, and, and the app yeah. and how bad it is but we uh we had a uh we had the first week of uh the supreme 2021 spring yeah uh, yep. and um we we got a the first week we were treated to the cause uh retro uh sweatshirt i mean if you yeah. want to call it that if you want to <laughs> yeah. we, were, we were treated a... no go 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 no we were treated to fucking losses but uh what what were you going to say chris what were you going to say luke it's not Luke brought it up how he, you know, the cause is a little because where are the X's? Yeah. That's, you know, they, this, it's not cause without two X's somewhere. What is that? That is just that's just a that's a hand drawn Supreme logo. That's, a, <laughs> mm -hmm. that's my niece could do that. I don't have a niece, but you know what I mean? I don't know. It's just like, yeah, it's not really a cause. Like my first thought when I saw this, I was like. OK, so this is like the first offering we're going to get from like not I wouldn't say like new Supreme, but like recently bought out Supreme. And I'm like, you know what? It's actually a pretty strong showing. I'm, I'm going to say it was actually a pretty strong showing for their opening week. Mm -hmm. I thought the dice were cool. The dice. This is, all right. So the funny thing about the dice is I so I thought about like you just think about accessories in general. That's I feel like that's always the first thing you look at the clothes. Cool. But then you go see what a cool accessories there are. At least I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's at the point where Supreme has made so many accessories that now you can I could like find a Supreme cup and then play Supreme Yahtzee now. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Like they've made True. so many accessories that I can like start to like form things together and make new accessories. Very true. Lawrence, what did you like? Dude? What do you think? Uh, I'm getting to the point where, you know, I, I want I I like the cause. So I, I obviously I attempted for it. I mean, when my. This is this is one thing I will say. I hate uh, being home and attempting a Supreme drop because when I was at work, when I used to work in an office in Midtown Manhattan, pre pandemic, I used to I mean, I was hitting on box logo hoodies. I was hitting on a lot of shit because I had that fast work Internet. Uh, so I was oh, like, man. whatever. So, you know, so I, I get a little now I'm a little jaded because, you know, I'm in the crib and it's like every time it's a fucking problem trying to get something. Um. I, I wanted the sweatshirt. I wanted a pink for personal, but I didn't get it. And I, at that point, you just move on. You're like, it's, I don't, you know, everything else. I thought about the water pistol tee, mm -hmm. uh, but I didn't really, you know, I'm like, ah, I don't, I don't really care, man. Mm -hmm. I like the Raphael tee. I yeah, thought about getting the, that. The Raph one, uh, just strictly on the fact that they put the logo in his band. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's that's the whole selling point for me too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> Hold on. It's also like as weird as it is, it's the also like the reason I didn't pull the trigger on it, because I was like, it's kind of 
like it's cool that they did it but it's still kind of dumb so i just didn't go with it i think i have that i'm like uh someone in the discord said you know they use this term the post nut clarity Yep. And, uh, and I, forgot, yep. I forgot which which listener said it, but whoever said it was it was funny as shit. You made me laugh. And and when I say like the post nut clarity, it's like, oh, I got to have this this T-shirt. And then you get it in the crib and it's like, oh, this shit, man, I shouldn't even have bought it. And then it's like, all right, well, let me go sell it. And then it's like, oh, if I sell it, I'm, I'm going to lose you twelve dollars. Like, you know what I mean? So it's like you have to with Supreme now. I think you have to be able to understand that if you get something, you need to really look at it as a personal and what a- what lawrence is really trying to say listeners is that you should jerk off every thursday morning before you go and buy supreme absolute clarity no you should <laughs> no you can't don't do that no, don't do buy that. something first buy something <laughs> on amazon that is that's oh that's i get <laughs> okay all it's right a consumerist right. post nut therapy <laughs> uh philosopher time if you will you buy something on amazon for like three bucks and then after that you're like i've checked out something already you know, something's coming to something's, my home. Yeah, some, something's on the way. I get I can get a notification somewhere. I, I would yeah. I used to say that all the time. I'm like, you know, I, when I would strike out on, you know, uh, a pair of sneakers or something like that. I'm like, fuck it. I'm buying something. I need to get like some yeah. skincare so oh, I can get that, that confirmation number. I need a confirmation number in my life somewhere. Yo, you know, Pharrell's skincare routine because of. Because <laughs> of yeah. Yo, you know what, actually? So I this guy I follow, he's a reseller, Skate the Great on Instagram. I don't know if you guys follow him. What he started to do is every time he gets an L, he takes the money that he would have spent on that and puts it in a savings account. Yes. There's, you know, a lot of dudes do things like that. Like I remember a lot of dudes would, uh, if they missed out on a sneakers drop, they would just take that money. I think Luke's even said it before where you would just put it in Nike stock. You would yeah. use that money to, you know, invest in the stock market. Yeah, I did that for like two weeks. And then I, I was like, why am I giving Nike money for why am I supporting their <laughs> habit of giving me losses? Yeah, I was just going to say, because it's like, all right, they fucked me. They can still have the money. They, but I mean, if you play it right, you should get, you know, if you're playing the stocks right. I made I made good money off of that stock, but I definitely sold it because at some point I was like, no, they stopped giving me W's. They stopped giving me consistent W's. <laughs> Fuck them. I'm taking them, taking my money back. Thank you for my my return. <laughs> Uh, so there's a rumor going around that uh, week two will include the uh, Supreme Dunks, yep. which I which I am strongly looking forward to. But I'm to the point now where I'm saying to myself, Lawrence, maybe you should go into your COVID filled office to uh, use the work <laughs> Internet connection to attempt to purchase these sneakers. I, I'm really strongly thinking about it, like telling my boss, yeah, I got to work from home. I got to work from the office. My boss will be like, why? And I would be like, just none of your fucking business i just got to go in i have to go through eighteen thousand security um measures just to get into the office now but it might be worth it for thursday oh, but yo wait if no one's there then you can use all the computers oh shit dude no i'm actually if no one's there i'm thinking if no one's tying up the internet connection the shit might go fast as fuck my ping might be my ping is gonna be insane already <laughs> No, the ping, talk to me about my ping. I I don't know, but that that sentence is funny. Yo, my ping is wild right now. <laughs> well, that, that's that's the big thing. Like your ping, when you the ping level you have, you know, it's 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 very imperative when you have. I I forgot. I think the higher, the lower the number, lower is better. Lower is better. I remember, yeah. yeah, I remember. I used to do the uh, the internet uh, connection. You know what's that? The speed test. Yeah, yep. I used to do speed tests before. Supreme drops just so that way You're I can nuts, dude. <laughs> no, I feel like that's mad regular. No, yeah. putting running diagnostic checks right before your right before a drop. It's like, damn, bro. It it's it's crazy out here. You're right. You're 100 percent right. You got to have good diagnostics to get the, the drop, bro. Mm-hmm. Bro, I've I've gotten, you know, I got the gold, you know, uh, Supreme joints. I got the the snakeskin Air Max 98s. So I've gotten, you know, dunks. I got the SBs on, on on my work computer. I've got box logos. Like, I've gotten every drop that I truly wanted on my work. Low Spe- ping, dog. Yeah, low ping, bro. Low ping. So I don't know. I might I might legit go to go to the office. I mean, it's it's comfortable working from the crib, but you know, it's also uncomfortable when you get that decline or you get that sold out message. Okay, yeah, but if you lose, 
<laughs> you spend the rest of the day at work. That oh is an extra God. L. <laughs> then you're LLL325. Like, if you go <laughs> to the office, you don't get it, and then you have to stay there all day. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be the worst. Yo, that this is a worst. triple L. Just ruin <laughs> Can I be honest with you? I thought I ran that through my head too. I was like, damn, L, if you fucking go in the office, <laughs> miss out on the dunks, and you gotta stay in the office till like five o'clock, you know, you are going to be hot. You're gonna be <laughs> furious, and no one's gonna be there to like see you go crazy either. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, yeah, and then you actually, you know, when you work from home, you know, it's you, you bullshit your day away. You know, you can get through the day, bullshit, you know, work. But when you fucking gotta go in the office, like you still, you gotta do a little bit more work. So yeah, yeah, you gotta, you gotta bring it. You gotta show results. You were in the office, bro, with that ping, with that ping. You, you got low, low ping in the office. You got to be going. Yeah, the, the HR is like Lawrence. What is this? You you have low the lowest ping numbers <laughs> out of anybody. You have place. a you have a Jordan one ping right now. Okay, you got to be <laughs> fucking moving. You got to yeah. be moving. Twenty three ping. That's nuts. No one's ever heard of that. What uh what uh what color are we attempting to go for if we uh if they do release this week? Oh my god. I believe I said black was my my go. Right? Isn't that what I said when we were t- talking about these originally? Yeah, I think yeah. you did say that. Yeah, I think the black. Black just because wearability and for sellability, too, because of the wearability, you know? Although that green is nice. You like the green, don't you, Luke? No, I like the brown. Oh, that's what it was. Excuse me. I like the bark brown. You put, like, you use, like, some nice earth tones with that. Ooh. Yeah. You know? Lawrence, which one? Blue? Uh, uh, I, I like blue or green, actually. But the You like the green. Okay, I remembered. Mm-hmm. But I did see uh, an Instagram post of Sally Sneakers, which I did put on our Discord, which you guys should join the Discord. It's fucking yes. amazing. It's, really, it's great. Uh, it, Sally Sneakers have the brown uh, pair. And, oh, my God, these are these are pretty solid. Brown pair is pretty solid, man. They're, you, man. They're a good pair. Brown's nice. Everybody's turning around on the brown. You know, you know. <laughs> You know what's interesting? Because a lot of times, like, the most hype color doesn't turn out to be the best color on, like, for the Supreme Drops. Like, for example, like, the up-tempos, the gold joints were super hyped out of their mind. But a couple years later, we're like, yo, the red one was actually the low-key sleeper. Yeah. So. Yeah. They, yeah, 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 they do do that. They, so that's like what the green is probably now, right? No, I that's think, like, the blue the is, the, is the hype pair. Blue and black are the two hype pairs. I mean, black is just going to be what it is. Right. But brown is definitely the sleeper, in my opinion. All right. Yeah, I'm down with that. I did like the way she styled that L with there. She had the anklet bracelet thing or whatever. That was chill. Mm -hmm. Oh, we learned something in the Discord about anklets. What what do you mean? Oh, in the Discord, we were talking about anklets. And basically, they used to mean, I don't know if they still mean this, but it was like if a woman had her, her anklet on, uh, with like a stocking on the inside, like uh, anklet, oh, I, okay, like, I never, I re- yeah, yeah, stocking. She go, is, she me, she she wants, she's looking for a night out, but with uh, with you wearing protection. If there's no no um, what do you call it? Uh, no stocking and just the anklet. She's just she's she's down. She's down. <laughs> <for whatever. laughs> That's what that means. Apparently, hilarious. Allegedly, huh? Allegedly. That doesn't mean like don't be creepy, listeners. Come on, <laughs> you know. They used to. It, 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 there was a. Mad I don't think our, our listeners have that problem though, right? I don't know. We have like creepy dude listeners. We just no. have dudes who just are way into sneakers. That's no. It. We got we got guys who are excited about raffles. We don't we don't you know what I mean? Like, we are nobody to worry about. We guys who like our listeners like forms. You know what I mean? They're yeah. not really interested in anklets. Yeah, yeah exactly. Nike talk only. Uh. Also, want to wish uh, Charles Barkley a happy birthday. That's oh, true. Yeah, Charles Barkley. Young Bark the God. Round mound of rebound. Um, yo, dude, he, listen, he has had some hits in terms of sneakers uh, that, you know, I think he's very uh, underrated in terms of, yo, he had, I mean, classics. And, you know, do you guys have a particular favorite uh, Charles Barkley sneaker? Hmm. Probably the '94, I think. Is it? Yeah, I like the '94 too. That like I mean, that that's black, I feel like white and purple. Yeah, I feel like that's the one. That's the OG color, right? The black, white, purple. 
I think I so. believe so. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, that one, that's the first thing that pops into my mind uh, mm-hmm. when I think of that, about that one. But I mean, yeah. What about you, L? Um, I, I always, I'm a big fan of the Force 180s because they, you know, they, they, uh, they had some amazing colors with the strap. Then they threw us the Union 180s, uh, the clerk part of clerk's pack. Yep. Uh, they, uh, the uh the the CBs uh where where they did the Nelly collab you know I'm, yep, I'm always yep, a big yep. fan of I, that you know I you know I I till this day still have my pair uh that I will never let go of and someone's going to fucking fix my soul because the soul has separated and, and cracked a little bit so I'm gonna need someone to fix that so all the listeners out there if you guys fix sneakers and you are good at it because I'm not gonna give you my fucking uh Union 180s or my Nelly dirties for you to fuck up. Uh, but if you're good <laughs> at it, uh, let me drop a line in the fucking uh, sub message box. It's a uh, sub podcast NYC and let us know what you do. That's what's up. That's right. I'm pretty sure juice does that. What's your favorite Charles Barkley moment though? Like when you think of Charles Barkley, what's, what's the moment you think of? Because I got one, but you guys go first. I think I like him better as a talking head than I do a basketball player. Cause I, because every time he says some wild shit, I'm just always with that. I, that that outshines his basketball career to me. I know that might be sort of egregious to say, but him as a commentator and the fucked up shit that he said over the years before they got a kind of trained him, those yeah. are the best. What about you, Al? Uh, you know he's he's got so many fucking memories, man. He won the MVP in in the '93 season. We went to Phoenix, but. I'm going to say this, and it was watching Charles in the Olympics in 92, being part of the Dream Team, uh, elbowing the Angolan uh, player. Uh, his name was Herlander, Her- Herlander Coimba or some shit like that. And, um, man, you know, it was like, don't be a nigga, but don't be a nigga. Like, that was the best way to describe it with Charles Barkley, where they wanted him to be wild. They didn't really, you know, they didn't want him to go – to Barcelona and be wild, but it's like that's Charles Barkley. He's throwing people through glass windows and shit like that. Yep. And um and man, I I watched that man. If you if for the listeners out there, if you never watched the Dream Team play, watch it on you know you watch it on YouTube and just watch how dominant they were and watch Charles Barkley and just beat Charles Barkley. Luke. My favorite moment was when Charles Barkley missed that dunk against Jordan in that regular season game. That is by <laughs> far my favorite. And then every every time and every time after that I hear him tell tell me that the Knicks are terrible. I just think of that moment. <laughs> I just think of that moment of him just missing that dunk in front of you do you remember that one, Lawrence? Where he's got what? like the it was like a I want I want to say like ninety four, maybe they were a regular season game. Mm-hmm. Uh, Charles Barkley, I think, stole the ball from Chicago. He had the open lane to the basket. He goes for the dunk, jumps a little too early, and just fucking just falls flat on his face. <laughs> it's great, so good. I mean, he's a, he's had a, he's had a lot of great. Remember, I don't know if you remember the the near the fight with him and Shaquille O'Neal. Is that when he threw the ball at his head? Yeah, that was the, <laughs> yeah that one was great. This is what I'm saying. This is the shit I'm here for. Like the that shit is the shit right there. But I, I think we got to I mean, you know, I know he you know, he's more into this generation known as the the commentator guy, yep. the, the guy who talks shit. He's had the funny moments. But as a basketball player, you know, that those, you know, 10 years of like from like 85 to 95 or, you know, he was dominant. The Philadelphia years, man, like, you know, he was the teams were solid. They just they couldn't beat the Bulls or the Pistons. But I mean, him when he went to Phoenix his first year, and he was playing with Kevin Johnson, Dan Marley, all those guys. Man, he was right. He was MVP. He was killing. He just ran to Michael Jordan. Yeah, yeah. You got to remember that one season where uh, those aliens took all of his power, his basketball power, <laughs> and ruined his season. You know, you got to wonder what it would have been like if those aliens didn't come and Michael Jordan saved them. That's hilarious, man. <laughs> He had a he had a good shine during the last dance, Doc. I feel like he got some some more credit where he was due. Yeah, you know everybody what I mean? loves Barkley at the end of the day. 
Oh, Meanie's saying, remember when Barkley raced that old ass ref? No, I don't yeah, remember that. You don't remember that? No. And then he kissed him on the lips basically <laughs> afterwards. Yeah, that was uh oh, was it Dick Pavetta? I don't remember which one it was. Hold on. Yeah, he, Dick he says Dick, Dick Pavetta, yeah. Dick Pavetta, yeah, it was Dick Pavetta. Yeah, I remember that shit. That was like all that was like a, like 10 years ago. It was like a decade ago almost. Maybe a little bit more. Yeah, dude. Hell yeah, Barkley, my guy. He's happy one birthday. Of the, happy Sir birthday, Charles. Sir Charles, man. Oh God. I think we're kind of at the end of here. Uh, All right. Was there anything that we didn't? Are you watching clips now? I was going to pull up the clip of him <laughs> racing the rep. Oh, yeah. Pull that up. I haven't seen it. So let's do this. I'm down. I'm here for it. you never I'm, seen it. Yeah. I'm trying to find the the moment where it started. Okay, here we go. I found it. Here nice. we go. This is great radio. <laughs> yeah. Sup FM radio. Sup FM radio. <laughs> Streetwear's ultimate podcast. <laughs> Streetwear's unsung podcast. Streetwear's oh, U letter yeah. podcast. Oh my god, look at him go. <laughs> Yo, Dick Oh, he's trying. Jo- he's like jogging. <laughs> he's not that far behind him. No. Oh man, I- <laughs> Yo. Oh, <laughs> Uh, Yo, this this era of like fun shit in the NBA is like over, bro. All the NBA players now are too cool to do shit like that. Yeah, yeah. That's why when we were talking about LeBron, uh, whatever, whatever, whatever that shit ago was, when I said that he was gonna do the um the dunk contest, the dunk contest. That's why I was like hype, because that's the shit that the guys need to do now. You know what I mean? Like they're making it. Uh, I don't know. Whatever. I just well, old head shit. It's they, it's because like the the shift has become less of like. An a interpersonal like rivalry amongst the other players as it is like the organization as a whole or like the fact that you just don't have a ring, you know? Yeah. And then like LeBron's like, I'm going to make a rap album. Like, dude, leave it alone. Stop. Just I'm not saying don't do what you want, but I'm I'm like, j- stay within like a reasonable field. You create an album. It's like, what are you doing? Well, no, no, no. If you listen, if you read the full tweet, LeBron yeah. said, I'm not going to be rapping. But yeah, I know no, a lot that- of people that will rap. Yeah, me. no, for sure. I'm not even saying that. I'm just saying that, like, remember when Alan Iverson tried to do this? It just you look stupid. No, but if he, if he DJ Khaled's it and basically you know gets all of his guys to you know do an album, I'm not mad at that. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, like we're in the era, like you know, you gotta look at it like this. So many athletes have created their own rap album. Shaq, Antonio Brown from the Buccaneers, Le'Veon right. Bell. They, these mm-hmm. these guys are actually in the studio rapping. AI, Dylan, know, Chris, uh, 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 Dame Lillard. Yeah, Lillard. And then there's the uh, Iman Shumpert. Uh, Shumpert. Chris Webber's yep. done music. Yep. Kobe's done music. Like, you know, Shaq, all these guys have created albums. LeBron is saying, yo, I'm going to curate. I listen to so much music, which I'm going to give him some crap props because LeBron. I see LeBron on his social media and the dude will post uh, 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 some music and you'll be like, oh, shit, I ain't hear this. Let me, you know what I mean? So LeBron, mm-hmm. is de- he definitely put me on a dope, dope BZ. Okay. You know, uh, what's his name? Uh, Doughboy. Uh, Niggas wouldn't dare walk down my block. Walk up with the ops. Y'all remember that song? Okay. Uh, maybe. Like, no, <laughs> no I, but no, please continue. <laughs> no, 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 please. Wait, actually, you know what? I Yeah, it kind of sounds familiar. I might not just know that part. Keep going. I think if you just, if you did a little more, I think we might remember. Oh, uh, because I got to no, know, because it's like, uh, uh, man, I got, I forgot son name. Dope Easy, Dope, Dope Easy. Or... Keep on. guessing. <laughs> <laughs> no, because now the listeners are like, what the fuck? Uh, no, I, I got now it's like, uh, I got to uh, uh, give me a second. Just talk, guys. So anyway, you know, I think we're at the end of our rope here anyway. So Luke, <laughs> send me that. I'll put it in the description. And then just to remind everybody, guys, the discord, uh, follow the podcast. Um, you know, this rebrand is a is a big move for us because we're, we're going to start to step into our own light. We're not going to try to reference anybody else's shit. We're going to be our own fucking force here. We got merch coming that's going to be all new. Um, so for the, those of you guys who have like the old merch, not only are you the fucking shit um, for getting the old shit, but now you're a part of a legacy. Um, this isn't just some shit that's going to go away. You know what I mean? Like we're going to be here for a while and now you got some of the OG shit. So you're now you're, you're a day one homie for real. You know what I mean? Yep. You've done it. Congratulations. Nigga one dead walk down my block. Oh, I do. Actually, I do yeah, remember I do. the sign down here. <laughs> Your that, rendition, that right your rendition, I don't think really brought like the the force that he had, but you know, it's 
I remember LeBron was bumping that, and I was like, I right, let me listen to this song. And then I was like, oh, wow. So, I mean, he definitely has a, a good taste for music. So I will give him that. And, um, yeah, but he's not. I hope he doesn't rap because, you know, don't do that, bro. Yeah, don't, don't. yeah, don't rap. Don't rap. But anyway, um, at Trevisus, at LZD325, unless he changes his name to LLL325, uh, at Not That Cheney, at 3 Meanie, at uh, Sub Podcast NYC. Thank you guys for listening to Sub FM. We appreciate you so much. And we will talk to you next week. Don't forget to join the Discord. Also, don't forget to give us five stars on iTunes. Make sure you give us a great review. Yep. Uh, join the Discord. Yep. We're here. Uh, we're going to have a great time with you guys. Please. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah.